guys uh, hello again uh, and good afternoon uh, happy to see you all in this webinar uh, this is the new series of the turkish student uh, turkish universities uh, webinar uh, at medu so let me introduce myself firstly uh, I, it's Selenay. Uh, I am the Education uh, Counselor and Marketing Specialist uh, at uh, Medio uh, Istanbul office. And today we will talk about uh, um, universities in Turkey. And later uh, we will be more uh, learn about. We will uh, learn more about uh, Sabancı University. So today our guest from the Sabancı University, Chan. And thanks for joining us today. Um, uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, it's uh, lovely to be here. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'll be talking in a bit, I guess, about uh, Zabanj University further after uh, Miss and I has a few words to say about Medu. Um, and I'll have like some time to ask your questions afterwards as well. Um, so again, uh, thank you, Miss and I, for uh, organizing the event. You're welcome. Uh, and exactly, yeah, firstly, I introduced uh, Medu, uh, who we are and what can you expect from us. And later on, the uh, Ms. Mr. Chan uh, will explain about Sabanj University. And then we have a, a Korean and part. Uh, please note down, uh, not, uh, your, uh, note down your questions uh, for the Korean and I, Korean and, uh, I part. So let me uh, share my screen. Uh, Ali, can you make me the co-host, please? Recording. Uh, my voice is clear right now. Okay. Everyone see my desktop? Yes. Right? yes. Great. And um, today uh, we, we want to share um, our uh, education agency and what you can expect. Uh, firstly, um, for the normal uh, education agency, um, basically we can say it's the bridge uh, between uh, you, I mean the students and the uh, universities. But uh, we are different from uh, others. We uh, we we are uh, we are um, we would like to be a, a family for you. And I can I can pass. All right, uh, a family far from home. Uh, we we do love our jobs, so that's why we say for the love of the education. Uh, what we do for you, uh, actually, we carefully choose the uh, best uh, universities, best private universities in Turkey to give you an opportunity to enrich your learning journey. Also, um, our team is consists from the uh, people who uh, being who experienced the being a foreigner in a foreign country. So we know the, your needs, we know the, your family's uh, concerns, we know the, uh, what kind of station you can face. So we got you guys and we can uh, help with uh, all of these issues. So uh, we will be with you the, all this journey uh, and uh, we hope that Turkey will be uh, your second home. And the uh, services, uh, so what we offer for you? Uh, yes, it's true, it's in there. The all services is free, uh, especially the consultation. Uh, we can uh, separate the three parts, uh, our services. Firstly, before you join, I mean, uh, before the arrive in Turkey and during the, your journey and the later on. Uh, 
So let's start uh, with the first part. Uh, before you come to Turkey, you need to complete your documents, papers from the uh, government offices. So we have uh, about that to collect the um, correct papers and from the correct uh, government offices. What else we do before you come? Uh, we have to uh, pick up, we have we help about we assist you about to pick up your accommodation uh, we find some options for you such as uh, dormitories or flats uh, whatever you want and give you the options uh, you can choose which is uh, which one is uh, better for you and also don't worry about the accommodation we will assist you about that too and uh, some of you uh, i know some of you you know what you want to study, what's your passion, what's your interest, but some of you, um, you don't know what can you study. It's normal, it's, uh, it's normal actually. So that's why uh, we are here to help you to find the best uh, match for your best university, best, pro uh, best program. And uh, what else? I always say the accommodation and also we have a city simulation for you. Uh, as I mentioned before, we know uh, how it's uh, how it's being uh, uh, moving uh, from a country to another country. So uh, we uh, organize a city simulation for you to be socialized and to uh, to know more um, cities about about this. And also, we provide the free acceptance. Uh, so if you get the acceptance and uh, arrive to Turkey, I think it's the uh, most unforgettable uh, moment uh, for the students. And we will be at that moment. We will pick you up from the airport. It doesn't matter if it's in uh, Istanbul or the other cities, we will uh, pick you up. And at that moment, we will provide you the guest SIM card. So it means that you will be the uh, online uh, when you arrive to Turkey. Uh, and you can con uh, connect with your families because I, we know that they, their concerns, uh, my kids arrive safely or not. So you will be online and connected. And we also assist you to complete your registration in university. We guide you what you need to do when you, need, uh, when you do this. And we, we will help also about that to complete your regis uh, registration process in the university. Also, uh, what we uh, support for you, um, help you in residency. Uh, you know, the, you need the permission about the residency. So uh, we also uh, guide you to uh, what you need to do, uh, where you need to go, which office uh, you need to get the residency. All this uh, stuff, we will help you. And also equivalency of your certificate. Of course, you will need that. And we will not say to you, yes, okay, you registrate the university, you get the residence permanency, okay, good, bye. We don't say that, we will be uh, during the, all your journey, we know you will start a new journey and you are excited, but we will keep in touch with you and we offer you, uh, if you come to Turkey through the MEDU, you will be automatically the member of the MEDU club. So it means that you will be free to attend our e events, uh, which is organized by the MEDU, uh, and it will be fun. Uh, let's talk about the Turkey. Why Turkey you should choose? Uh, if you compare about in other European countries, such as UK, Germany, or Canada, I don't know, USA, uh, for sure, the Turkey is more affordable one. Uh, I can say as a person who have been in uh, some European countries, yes, it's uh, compared to another countries in Europe, it's uh, really uh, cheaper and affordable in our fees, also the living cost. And uh, maybe some of you know the Bologna process. Uh, Turkey is the part of it. Yeah, we can say the Turkey has been the full uh, membership of this process. Uh, it means that uh, Turkey signed an agreement with, about that and 
uh, we reach the uh, high educational quality, I mean the star, uh, standard, their standard. So we offer you the modern high education standards. Also generally uh, ask from the students, uh, we get the questions about scholarship. Yeah, it depends on the actual university, which university you accept it. Uh, but um, yeah, we know that uh, private universities has a uh, fee, but also they, uh, they provide the um, students scholarship according to your academic uh, merits. But I will not go detail it's about that. Um, Ms. Chan will uh, give the information. And yeah, we also are uh, in Turkey, our university's campus is beautiful and you have uh, modern facilities uh, to when you live in campuses. Also the student mobility is another advantage of the Turkey universities. And <clears throat> what else? Actually, no need to mention about the hospitality of the Turkish people. Uh, as a Turkish one, I can say that yeah, we are warm, warm blood, uh, blooded per, uh, people and always welcoming to foreigners and friendly. Yeah, we, we, we will be happy if you see the in, see you all in Turkey. And uh, maybe some of you know about the uh, Turkish cuisine. Hmm? Yeah, okay. I told you to keep that open and write Thanks some words from there to here. Okay, I'm continuing. Uh, and you know, the Turkey is in the middle. When you look at the world map, you can see the Turkey in the middle of the map. So uh, it's geopolitically in, uh, located in the really important place. And so it's attraction. Um, from the tour, uh, tourists, I mean, uh, so much uh, tourists and come to uh, our country to see the historical places, natural beauties. And uh, if you ask me, can you uh, define the Turkey as a one word, I can say the cosmopolitan. Yes, uh, and more, uh, we live the four season in Turkey. Uh, we live the uh, winter with uh, everywhere covered by the snow uh, and uh, summer and spring and fall. And the nature is beautiful here. You can uh, see a lot of mountains, lakes, uh, waterfall. What else? You can find all these in Turkey. And uh, according to researchment, uh, people who live in the north uh, feel more depressive because of the weather, but we are lucky one. Uh, we have a, such a nice weather in Turkey. Mm, let's talk about more cities in uh, Turkey. So you see the, this uh, huge number here. Uh, we have a lot of... Um, attract a lot of international students uh, studying in Turkey uh, because of the advantages, which is I already mentioned. And this is the, um, it's the 10th uh, best destination in G, uh, G20 countries. And generally, uh, if you ask generally students uh, which city prefer, of course, first they come to do, uh, to Istanbul take the first uh, part, first line, and secondly, Ankara and Izmir, Antalya and Eskişehir continues. Um, uh, let me um, give information about, uh, yeah, we have two kind of uh, universities in Turkey. One of them is foundation uh, universities, uh, let's say we can say the private universities, and the another, another one is the pu uh, public one. Yeah, uh, so we can say it's funded by the government. So let's compare them and get more uh, about them. Um, when we compare the private universities more uh, new than the public universities, and the public universities oldest one is the last 14th century. 
Well, what about the languages? Uh, generally, in foundation universities, they uh, give the, uh, in, in English the lectures. Uh, but instead of the foundation universities, uh, public universities generally give in Turkish. But we don't say that they never give in English. They have also English one. Uh, but generally, they do this in Turkish. And the, um, the biggest maybe the uh, difference between them, the uh, fees, uh, it's uh, affordable range, uh, I think, uh, between uh, 2000 up to 20, uh, 27,000 uh, to uh, 500. Uh, sorry about that. I'm not good at the uh, numbers in English. Uh, what about the public universities? It's range from the one hundred to seven thousand dollars. And lastly, the exam. Uh, maybe some of you similar about that. Who is searching about the uh, universities in Turkey? For the foundation universities, they don't have a, any entry exam. So simply, you can uh, get the acceptance uh, in a week. Uh, so the acceptance based on the uh, fulfill the all documents and that's it. But when we come to the public universities, they require that the uh, entrance exam, it's called it yours, a yours. And uh, you have to uh, competence with the other all uh, parts uh, students. So it's uh, one uh, one. Uh, it's based on the competition between all participants. Uh, last two slides, just stay tuned. <laughs> uh, this is our portal actually, medutour.com. Uh, uh, you can visit our uh, portal and you can find the uh, universities, uh, list of the universities. Uh, actually, first you should choose the uh, city and then uh, you will see the list of the universities uh, for you. And the last part, the most excited uh, one actually, uh, application process. It's not that much um, hard actually, it's uh, really easy. Firstly, you need to register in education portal. Uh, you can use Google account, Facebook account, or any email address, it doesn't matter. Just uh, go to medutour.com. And you need to upload uh, your documents. Actually, the only thing you need to do the upload documents about which documents you need to uh, upload it. These are all written there, but not all of them is uh, mandatory. But some of them is mandatory, such as passport copy, photograph, uh, grades, high school certificate. But the international exam like SAT or uh, IB, it's not uh, mandatory. But if you have uh, this exam score, uh, it, is, um, it is better for you to get scholarship. And also, uh, after you did you do this, uh, it's time to apply, open your uh, open program list page and find the best uh, program and university uh, for yourself. Actually, we will help you about them and just click the apply button. That's it. And I hope that I don't bother you with my presentation. Uh, Thank you for, very much, Selenai, for your great presentation. And I would like quickly to introduce myself before taking more of your time. My uh -huh. name is Mohamed El Najjar. I'm working with Selenai here in Medu Agency Company, and I have been working here for seven months now. And I would like to tell you that I'm 26 years old. I'm born in Saudi Arabia, in Jeddah, and I was one of Al Wadi international students. And I think Ms. Salma Masifuddin, she is here with us, and she is one of my great teachers. And I would like to thank her to give us this opportunity to have the webinar with you guys. And I have studied also in Turkish University. Mohammed, so nice to see you. Sorry Hi, for Ms. interrupting Sama. you. Sorry for no, interrupting, no, but I'm just so proud to see you. 
Uh, me too. I'm really happy and glad, and I'm really proud that I was taught under you, Miss Salma, and I'm really here in this position and in this country, and I did my master's in medical biotechnology because of you also. You made me <laughs> love biology very much. Thank you, you very much. You worked hard. You worked hard. Yeah. Thank so you. Good and definitely, to see hopefully, you. I will have a visit to Saudi Arabia, and I definitely I will see you. Yes, inshallah, inshallah. Go inshallah, ahead. Sorry hopefully. for interrupting you. Sorry. No, no. It's my pleasure to hear your voice again. And guys, as I told you, I was an Alwadi international student, and here Ms. Salma was here, and I did the two of my A-levels, biology and chemistry, and I did six of my IGs, guys, and I did my uh, bachelor in pharmacy in North Cyprus, which is a Turkish university, and I did my master's in medical biotechnology, and it was really great and smooth and flexible education. I lived best of my life, and also I'm planning also to do my PhD in Turkey, in Istanbul, most probably in genetics field, in molecular biology, um, nevertheless, molecular medicine, because in Turkey, you give really good opportunities, a uh, good education. And also we are doing a webinar with Sabanji University. And it's one of my options because Sabanji really is a really great university with a great ranking and teaching and located in the beautiful part of Istanbul, which is the Asian side. And also they have the uh, department that I really love, which is molecular molecular biology and genetics which is my field of area so i'm looking forward to apply as well and so students i'll not take your time so we can start the webinar with sabanji university nevertheless i will share my whatsapp uh, contact with you in case if you want to ask me some questions about applications we can apply for you for next year in the like if you have only grade 12 first semester we can also apply for you and we need your grade 10 11 12 first semester grade until you get the uh, grade 12 and for the a level one we know it takes long time for the original certificate to be out but in turkey is very smooth as long as you're going step by step with the process we are here to help you for free and we're not taking anything with you and your mind i hope you will be my students here because i was in the same boat like you and i'm here to help you so you can consider me as one of alwadi representative turkey representative and ambassador here Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mohammed. And also, uh, I will leave my uh, email uh, to chat box and feel free, sure. please, uh, to ask uh, any questions to us because we are here because, uh, to remove the question marks in your brain, in your mind. Uh, and feel free and do not hesitate. Uh, so, um, if Mr. Chan is here, we can uh, continue with the uh, Sabanju University. Absolutely. Um, thank you uh, for the presentation. Um, uh, and Mohammed, uh, nice to hear from you as well. Unfortunately, the presentation that I have is for undergraduate students. Mm -hmm. um, but no when you start talking about molecular biology, especially, it is one of our, like, sort of um, on the research field, especially one of our mm -hmm. strongest programs. Sure. So sure. get in touch with me later and we'll talk. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. Sure. Of course. Um, just me, let, let me just quickly share my screen. Um, and you can let me know if everything uh, looks okay. Uh, is it being shared all right at the moment? Can you guys see the screen fine? Uh, not yet, so far. Okay, just let me know. There might be a bit of a delay. Perhaps. Yeah, now it's good. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll keep my camera closed uh, while I'm doing the presentation and screen sharing because uh, sure. since I'm like you know doing this from home at the moment, unfortunately my uh, connection sometimes can falter. Um, so this is Sabanju University. Hi, everyone. First of all, I'm Chan from uh, Sabanju's International Relations Office. I'm the senior specialist here for marketing, and I'm responsible for recruitment um, basically from uh, the Middle East, uh, Pakistan, and the entirety of Africa. Um, talk and then on to a Q&A session and I'll try and answer a couple of questions that you might have um, though we will you know most uh, probably get to go over everything that you know might be of interest so to start with um, let's talk about 
where the university is located. So um, it was mentioned already, I think Mohammed mentioned it a second ago. Uh, we are located in the Asian side of Istanbul on the southeastern part of the city, um, a bit outside the city center. A bit ago, you saw the campus uh, sort of aerial view from its main gate. Um, we have a very sort of, you know, Americanized almost campus university concept, very large area uh, with all the dormitories and everything inside the main campus. So even though we're a bit outside the city center, it is really a small city in and of itself, uh, which we'll talk about later in greater detail, of course. Um, before we go into talking a bit about the university, um, let me just give you a bit of an uh, overview about uh, the Sabanji holding or like the, the where the university gets its name from. So uh, Sabanji uh, holding or the Sabanji family, they're basically one of the richest families in the country. They have one of the largest corporations in Turkey. Um, as you can see, they're uh, working in a lot of different sectors uh, with some brands that you might be familiar with internationally. Um, and some more uh, doing work in uh, Turkey, of course. Um, the university was founded around like 20 years ago as a philanthropy project by the family. Um, and it is basically, you know, the, this, this fact is generally useful for students with regards to simply, you know, the funding that the university obviously receives through this um, huge corporation, but also with regards to both the industry connections, the international connections, uh, with regards to job opportunities in Turkey, so just like what this kind of provides. So we always like to sort of emphasize that before we move on. Um, let's talk about a little bit about some uh, facts and figures about the university to give you a better, uh, better overview of what Sabanji University is all about. Uh, as I mentioned, the university was founded um, like 22 years ago at this point, closing in on 23. Um, we are a non-profit foundation university so um, basically as opposed to like a public university you can consider as private but the basic concept being that the university as i said is a philanthropy project so it is not really a for-profit uh, institution um, all the programs that we offer are fully in english um, entirely 100 percent. there are no turkish courses basically almost at the university Every degree that we provide is completely in English. Uh, another fact that uh, separates Sabanji from some other universities in Turkey is the small student size, uh, student number, I should say. So at Sabanji, uh, we only have around 5,000 students uh, compared to some Turkish universities. That's quite a low number. Uh, from the start, the university was focused and like created based on a aim of re uh, being strong in research. Um, with that in mind, the you know student body has always been sort of designed to be small. So for uh, the majority of that, those like 22 years, we have been basically at this exact student number um, and like the university doesn't have that kind of inclination, let's say, to increase this count. Uh, this also provides us, of course, with, you know, smaller class sizes, which means you have more contact with your faculty members. So, you know, you do not have to be part of a 200, 300 student uh, classroom and so on. So you'll always be able to reach your faculty, um, your professors and so on, which, of course, makes the educational you know, system work a bit smoother. Um, another fact that we always emphasize is the graduation uh, employment rates. We'll talk about these in greater detail as we move into the presentation as well, but uh, around 97% of our graduates uh, find employment within six months to a year after their graduation, which is a very, very high percentage for uh, most Turkish universities. So that is another thing that we're quite proud of. Once again, a bit related to the recognition that the university has, of course, but also regard related to the industry connections and you know the professional connections that uh, the industry is afforded through the um, you know Sabanji holding. Um, We'll talk about rankings to also to move over that, but um, suffice to say that we're one of the best universities, if not the best uh, in the specific field that you're interested in, in Turkey. Um, as far as international students go, around uh, 10 to 12 percent of our student body is international in a year. Uh, it sometimes changes and increases a bit based on exchange student numbers from uh, various partnerships that we will talk about later as well. But you can expect something around like 600 to 700 of our, of our student body to be international at any given year. 
Um, and of course, with regards to scholarships and so on, we will talk later on. So um, all that said, uh, you can see here a small breakdown, first of all, of where our international students come from. Um, so this so of course, given percentage wise, um, but just to sort of like, and, and sort of like as rounded numbers, let's say, but to just sort of let you know about the uh, parts of the world that we recruit from, um, uh, the major, like the largest numbers of students generally come from, as you can see on the um, map as well, uh, the parts where, you know, the, the region in the world called the MENA, like Middle East and North, America, uh, North Africa. Um, so around like 40, 41, 42 percent or so of our students come from that region. Um, as far as countries go, we get a lot of students on graduate level from Iran, uh, on undergraduates, of course, from like the Turkic uh, republics, the Asia percentage that you see are basically dominated by these two countries, as well as um, Pakistan to a degree and so on. But we basically have a lot of students that come from Europe and North America as well. And of course, Africa too, um, count, like not counting um, North Africa, but Sub-Saharan Africa as well. So we have a very sort of widespread of international um, countries on campus. Um, that said, let's talk about uh, the programs that we have, the faculty. So as, as I mentioned earlier, the university is, of course, small, uh, which means, you know, the, this also is reflected in the programs that we have. We do not have hundreds and thousands of programs like some other universities do. We only have three faculties and 11 uh, undergraduate programs total. Um, basically, these three faculties are the Savage Business School, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, and the Faculty of Engineering and Natural Sciences. At the business school, there's only one program program on the undergraduate level, which is the management degree. Um, management and business administration are basically interchangeable words in Turkey, um, just to sort of clarify that quickly. Uh, arts and social sciences, uh, we have the program political science, national relations, psychology, and our visual arts program. Uh, and on our engineering and natural sciences, uh, industrial engineering, material science, mechatronics and our molecular biology program, which Mohammed is uh, interested in, hopefully. <laughs> um, so that said, I will uh, uh, take some time here now. This is probably the most important slide in the entire presentation uh, to talk in a bit more detail about the education model that we have. So Labanji University has a unique education system. Uh, in comparison to every other Turkish university, really. Um, so some of you might be aware of this uh, program or, or of the system from uh, US universities, like you know, universities like Columbia, for example, in New York, uses the exact same system as we do. Um, it's called the liberal arts model. So how it works is that um, once you apply to the university, let's say you applied as a psychology student, uh, at Sabanji University, when you start your courses, you do not actually start as a, Sabanji, as a psychology student, but you start as a Sabanji University student. What that means is that you take shared courses alongside every Everybody else in your first year. You do not actually start your program in your first year. Um, I will show you the courses that are involved in this first year uh, of, of the four-year bachelor program. This is not an extra year, but of part of the four-year education system. Um, once you graduate from this shared year of uh, courses, you are then given the option to choose whichever program that you want from the university. So. After you finish our first year, you then have the um, have a complete freedom on this. Like there's no limitations, no requirements. There's no GPA cutoff. There are no quotas. Um, there's no requirement about the kind of courses that you've taken in the past. Basically, as soon as you finish your first year of the education, the universities, every, every single program that I talked about a moment ago, every single program that you see, saw across every single faculty, you can choose whichever one you want with absolute freedom. Um, there's, of course, a lot of things that we do in this process to help students make the correct choice. Um, so, you know, there'll be events throughout the year talking about employability options in a specific field, research options in a specific field, what it is like to study in a university in that field and so on. Basically, the goal is to make sure that you make the program decision um, with complete awareness of how it's going to actually turn out. Around 80% of our students actually change the program that they initially applied to the university with uh, using this model. So it is something that provides a lot of benefits. And on top of this, there are also 
uh, free of charge double major opportunities in the university in which you know you can study two programs at the same time and graduate from the exact same course or minor programs which you can do uh, across several different faculties which again of course are financially um, uh, you know free of charge which means that at the end pretty much every student's path at Sabanju is almost unique uh, because you can start you know studying a specific program in your second year for example let's say you're torn between two programs right like we told I told you you know that you're able to make this choice freely completely on your own but let's say you're torn between studying computer engineering and psychology at Savanji you can actually choose to study both for that second year it is possible to try out both of these programs just to see how, what it feels like to take computer engineering courses or what it feels like to take psychology courses and if you decide you know what psychology is really not for me i expect something completely different from this i'm just going to go with computer engineering you can do that too you can then choose computer engineering and you can graduate as a computer engineer instead. So you really have a complete freedom to make up your mind about what you want to study after you begin. Um, this is, of course, the advantageous side. One other part of this system has to be uh, explained in detail, which is the courses that you take in your first year. So as I said, every student takes the exact same courses in the first year. So what does that mean? Um, that means that the university's model is basically aiming to give everybody a good fundamental um, knowledge about a variety of different subjects. Um, this is both to provide, provide you with the tools that you need to study any program that the university provides, but it is also just in the interest of, you know, ensuring that you have a wide range of knowledge about various different subjects instead of graduating from simply one program and you know continuing your life that way. That said, these programs do include some programs which um, have different, let's say, levels of difficulty. Uh, the one that we always underline is calculus. So every student who, who wants to study at Sabanji University has to take calculus in the first year, which is a advanced math course, if you're not aware. Um, so even if you're interested in studying visual arts and you're absolutely sure you want to study visual arts and you completely hate math, do keep in mind that you have to take calculus in Zavanju. So this is a potential downside. So it's always something that you know we want to inform students about so they can make their choice uh, with awareness. Um, so do realize that you know there's going to be different courses as you can see in addition to like for example calculus we have natural sciences courses we have uh courses related to world history humanity and society basically like we have law and ethics courses um about like we have computing coding courses very much entrance coding uh co courses basically introduction you can imagine it that way um i should emphasize that these courses are generally you know, lighter than they would be. So like when you're taking coding courses, you're not taking a very advanced version of it, of course. Uh, but still, it is important to know that these are the types of courses that you will be expected to take. Um, and of course, as I said, the benefit of the system is that it allows you to freely choose the program you want to study afterwards. But it is also important to realize that this is the path that you have to follow. So as this is like perhaps the most important information about the university, I want to take my time. Um, we'll move on. Uh, and you know, if you have any questions later on, I'll answer those at that time. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'll like sort of move through this slide a bit quickly. The university has a very strong research focus. There are hundreds of laboratories and tons of research centers, even like arts and design studios and psychology studios and so on in the university. Some of some of our research centers do very active work internationally and nationally about like variety of different topics um, for like molecular biology. For example, we have a research center that has been uh, founded alongside the in a sort of in concordance with the Turkish state called Sunum, um, that does a lot of very, very active research, uh, like health sciences, usually related to research, biomedical and so on, such as like active cancer research and so forth. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, things that we're quite uh, benefit from doing their studies, especially if you're interested in the research field um, in the university. So, uh, like, that is a bit more of a huge world. So we just sort of skim over it as it is, but 
um, just suffice to say that you know the research focus in the university is not just for words. Um, and that also, of course, carries through to our rankings um, internationally, since, of course, research output is one of the major things that universities are judged on. Um, so, you know, in the world, as you can see, uh, we're ranked in 500, 600 band in terms of rats, our first and a lot of different rankings and different like either subject base or uh, on certain specific areas for example one of the ones that i am proudest of uh, the one that always impresses me the most is the world's best small universities ranking so among all universities in the world over student numbers uh below and like at or below five thousand, we are the 27th best university in the whole world which is um, you know as i said always impressive for me um among all the universities in Asia, uh, where the you know 48th, including you know China and Japan and Korea and uh, so on and so forth, so we're like you know in the top 40, in the top 50 universities. So you know when we talk about education quality and like research focus and so on, we also have like this sort of like rankings, let's say, to back back it up, and so just sort of you know saying this uh, wildly, let's say, on our own. Um, as far as subjects go, so as we talked about, the university only has like 11 faculties. So at the very bottom of this slide, you can see you know, the financial times ranking, which is of course for the School of Business. So in amongst all the universities in uh, Europe that have management programs and business schools, we're like the 63rd best university in the in the entire you know, in the EU range. So again, that's something that we're quite proud of. Um, as far as uh, other subjects go, you can see, you know, like in computer science, for example, we're ranked first in Turkey uh, and our engineering and technology uh, faculty itself is ranked 300 in the world, in the top 300 in the top 400 in the world. Uh, and our social sciences faculty, you can see that we're again like first, first in Turkey in the top 250s and so on. Um, so basically, this is to emphasize more that, you know, the university is small and we have these like specific uh, 11 programs. Um, we basically are not built in such a way that we have like one faculty that the university is absolutely you know, shining in and other programs I've had with universities that have a lot of different faculties and lots of programs. In Sabanja, basically all the faculties are equally strong, all the programs are equally good. Um, so, you know, you have a free choice to choose, you know, whichever program that you want and you'll get the same quality of education. So all of that said, let's get to a bit more of the fun stuff. Um, <laughs> so exchange programs, I mentioned this earlier uh, in passing. So for those of you who might not be aware, exchange basically at the university level means um, you can spend six months to years or two terms of your university education. It's another institution across the world. And you still graduate from the university that you're enrolled in, of course, but you know, this gives you some international experience, what it's like to live in a different country, um, you know, what their culture is like, what their education systems are like, and so on. Uh, we have partnerships across the world, as you can see, like basically we have like sort of numbers here of the partnerships that we have, the majority of them being in the EU, uh, with top universities. Like the goal of our rank exchange program uh, partnerships is to always partner with universities that are higher ranked than us. So in the you know EU, you have like partners like you know Manchester University, for example, in, in Britain, or uh, Columbia University in New York in the US. Uh, in, in Hong Kong, we have you know Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. In Netherlands, we have like Delft and so on, like top top universities, in the you know top fifties, top tens, even rankings and the programs that we're partnered with them. Studying in Sabanji, you can choose you know as I said like six months to a year of your study, and you can go and study at one of these universities completely without any extra cost. Um, the university in fact covers, like we actually cover your personal costs during this exchange year too, um, including plane tickets, including, you know, day-to-day -day living expenses. And uh, generally most of these, you know, are um, like across the Erasmus program in the European Union. This is generally covered for in most universities, but in, in Sabanju, if you go to the US, the university will also cover your costs. If you go to Australia, the university will also cover your costs. So like whichever country you pick from whichever part of the globe that you want to go to, you know, Japan, Korea, Australia, you know, Brazil, um, as I said, even the US and Canada and so on and so forth, 
Um, we will take care of you know the financial aspect of everything, so you can go and like have a good experience basically wherever you want um, to get a better sense of you know better education, a better sense of um, you know the, the model that you know the different countries follow the the depths of your program in a different more international sense and so forth and of course just have like an intercultural experience so this is something that we always like to emphasize and every year we send hundreds of students internationally like this and we receive hundreds of students generally um you know of course COVID permitting um so this is something that we always like to talk about in detail about uh you know a strong thing to consider during your study um, this, of course, also ties into our internship programs. So one aspect of Sabanja University that is also important to mention is that internships at Sabanja are mandatory, uh, which means that you're not able to graduate from Sabanja without doing an internship. This is true for every single program that we have, including um, you know, visual arts, for example. Yeah, but of course, this doesn't mean that we just, you know, throw you at some point into the you know business world and ask you to like find an internship somewhere or you will not be able to graduate. Like we assist you throughout this program um, to find an internship that is you know worthwhile that will help you help you to you know grow as a person. Um, a lot of internships, of course, are like done in Turkey. As I said, the university's own business connections and so on do provide us a lot of options of like finding great internships in Istanbul with multinational companies. But in re recent years, we've also had a lot of students do their internships in uh, internationally as well in the, under these same circumstances that we talked about. So the university will try and financially support you if you can find an internship that you know the university is partnered with. So we have a lot of like internships, internship positions, for example, in Germany in like lots of years, so, or in the Netherlands, for example. So students can go and do their internships there and start creating this kind of like business connection. And this, of course, also benefits from our alumni network. So you can see some of like the map, the pictures on the right side, those are with our alumni, basically the alumni meetings. So we have a lot of alumni in different countries in the world and like a growing number of alumni in the Silicon Valley, which is why the San Francisco picture is so crowded. Um, so, you know, you can sort of, you know, benefit from those connections, the past that, you know, the students have uh, formulated before you, uh, you know, find the uh, you know, find an advantage to your, for your own, for example, and that kind of network that the university has as well. Um, speaking of alumni, I'll very quickly talk about this too uh, before we move on to some uh, campus and application related uh, matters. Uh, you can see where the rest majority of our alumni are. Obviously, the high number of be the majority of the students are Turkish, but as you can see, there's a lot of alumni in Europe and in North America as well. Uh, the, and here, 97% of our alumni are placed, uh, which means they either find an employment in the, uh, professionally or continue their grad studies within a year of their graduation, which is a very, very high number, um, high percentage, and something that we're very, very proud of. Um, and, you know, this is, again, of course, something that, you know, benefits you too, because we keep this alumni network connection very closely. Um, so, you know, you can also get in touch with these alumni during our undergraduate studies and, you know, hopefully benefit from their experiences as well. Um, speaking of, uh, you can see some of the programs, uh, some of the universities that our alumni go to with regards to their master's programs. Uh, this is something that we also like to sort of talk about in detail, which is that uh, this idea of using Turkey as a stepping stone. So both Sabanju and some of our other partners, top research universities in Turkey, we always talk about this uh, in the same sort of way, which is this idea of, you know, at the moment, for example, it might not be a acceptance from Stanford University or MIT. Um, but, you know, you instead study at a top ranked university in Turkey with very strong connections, both like internationally and with regards to research and so on with top universities across the world. And then you can use that faculty connection, that academic connection to continue and do your master's at, you know, MIT, at Stanford, at Harvard, at uh, Cambridge and Columbia and so on and so forth. So um, these universities that are listed here, these are not, they are not listed here because like we sent one student to Oxford 15 years ago and like we just quickly put their logo here. It's because we consistently send students to these universities almost every year. Um, because as I said, like our faculty especially are almost all either graduates or professors from top Ivy League universities across the world, um, or like top universities across the world, I should say. 
So you can you know use their connections as well and continue on to get an you know amazing uh, you know master's program acceptance or PhD and so on and so forth at top universities. This is of, this of course applies also to professional companies. So some of the companies you see in this slide are um, based in Turkey. But you know, when we talk about Google, as I mentioned a bit ago when I was talking about Silicon Valley, we're not talking about like some small data center in Istanbul, but we're talking about the actual headquarters in, you know, in San Francisco, and Microsoft and so on and so forth. So you can you know, use these connections too, to you know, go and hopefully find employment uh, through our alumni networks and so forth and in these places as well. So this idea is I sort of using Turkey as a stepping stone is something that we always like to emphasize. Um, that said, let's talk a bit more about the campus and acceptance uh, related admission related details. So as I mentioned earlier, our campus is located outside the city center. Um, we have been of our student base course. That's also largely because the university is so small and the campus is so big um, in Turkey. Um, you know, it's a very vibrant campus, very beautiful. Um, now that COVID is sort of, you know, like slowly dying down, if you have at all the possibility of visiting Turkey at any point, we would love to welcome you on campus, uh, you know, just to sort of allow you to see the sites and so forth. Um, we will talk about the dorms in a moment, but suffice to say that all of our accommodation options are lit literally located on campus. Um, so the campus itself, as I said, is uh, built like a city. Um, so by that, I mean, basically most of your day-to-day -day needs you can find, um, you know, options to take care of them inside. So we have, you know, a health center, obviously, a sports center, a library, like things that you would expect the university to have. But there's also like, you know, seven different cafeterias. There's like a Starbucks. There's a couple of other like private food venues and so on and so forth. There is a performing arts and art center, which is like a theater. There's a movie hall. There's a supermarket. There's a hairdresser. There's a bank. Um, so like basically most of the things that you would look to, you know, take care of in a day-to-day -day type of situation, you can take care of them on the campus as a post office and so on. So the campus is really itself built like a sort of city to make sure that, you know, you have a safe and secure environment, a comfortable, fun environment, and you do not really need to, you know, go out constantly to the greater Istanbul area and try and, you know, figure out how am I supposed to find this and that and so on and so forth. So we do pride ourselves in how sort of welcoming our campuses um, and as far as accommodation goes so if you can see the picture on the right side so those apart from the bottom right um, those like, like every, every building you see those are our dormitories this is like located right in the back of our campus. Um, all of this is our campus area, 2,600 students, which is more than 50% of the active student body in the university, which makes us have the highest percentage of dormitory capacity across, as a percentage, of course, of the student body across all Turkish universities. Um, all of these dorms, like we guarantee dorm rooms to international students, students, which means that if you want to stay in the dorms, as long as you apply in the application period, you will always have a room. Um, so like international students always uh, have guaranteed dorm rooms, basically. Uh, there are two dorm room types, and this is something important to mention. Unfortunately, there's no single person room at Sabanji, only two and four person rooms. Um, you can find their costs in Turkish Lira and the approximates in dollars sort of written under them. This is a bit outdated with the current dollar exchange rate. At the moment, it's a bit lower than this too. I believe the four-person room's approximate cost is around like 1400 right now, and the approximate cost for the two-person room is around like uh, $1,900 for academic year. So for nine months of the year, this is the cost. Um, but of course, I should mention that these are for the last year um, acceptance, you know, uh, details. So there might be an increase in this year, um, which we will, of course, inform, uh, you know, students later on once it's decided in the upcoming weeks. Uh, but most likely it will not change too much from this range that you see at the moment. It will not increase, you know, behind, below, above, I don't know, $2,300 or something for the two-person room 
at most. Um, so you can sort of expect uh, to, it to be in that range for the academic year entirely. Um, so that said, let's talk about how to apply. Um, so first things first, the actual application dates for the upcoming application period are not announced yet, but every year we sort of open the applications at the same time, which is either the beginning of January as in after the new year, um, so like January 2nd or January 3rd or something like that, or um, we open them on January 15th. So uh, they'll open in the beginning of January, in the first two weeks of January. Um, and then they generally continue until the beginning of August. So you have around the seven month, eight month period of applications. Um, all of the applications are online. Uh, there is an application fee of $30 um, that you can pay through the application system, obviously, with a credit card. Um, the applications are generally quite easy. Um, you can apply to us with a variety of different um, score types. We can talk about these in greater detail in a moment. Um, but suffice to say that we accept both national systems across pretty much the world with regards to like high school graduations and so on and so forth and all international systems that you would expect such as SATs, IBA levels and so on and so forth. Um, so we do have a very sort of expansive uh, application uh, process, let's say. Um, and of course, you know, you basically apply through the online application system by submitting your documents, then, um, you know, paying the fee and then, you know, submitting the application. Um, one important thing to mention is that in Turkey, generally, um, English exams are not required during the exam applications. So we do not require an exam such as a TOEFL or IELTS during the application. Um, That's because, of course, you know, in Turkey, uh, English education can vary. So generally um, students have the option of taking English courses after they begin the university. So as a result of this, you do not need to have an English exam as you're applying to the university, but you can instead take the exam that the university provides, um, which you know, if you pass, you just start your courses and if you fail, you have to take English courses at the university to a certain uh, degree. Um, another question that we get asked quite often, and I'll sort of mention it quickly, is that we do not necessitate an exam, such as the SAT or anything of that sort. There are no mandatory um, requirements that every student has to have. We basically evaluate students, you know, based on their uh, nationality, based on their education model, based on where they're coming from, and so on and so forth individually. So we do not have like a sort of general requirement that everybody has to fulfill to be able to apply. Um, admission process wise, I'll sort of mention this to how the process goes. So in Turkey, the applications for every university, this is the truth pretty much by the way, except maybe one university, um, applications are generally handled at as far as private universities are concerned, I should say, our uh, foundation universities are concerned. Um, generally applications are basically um, done through a through what we call the rolling admission system. So across the seven month, eight month, whatever application period that the university has, you basically get an offer as you apply. So if you apply in January, January you'll get an apply at the end of the month. You'll apply in March, you'll get an end, apply, yeah, reply, I'm sorry, at the end of the, end, the end of March and so on and so forth. So like as the year goes on, if you apply in late July, you'll get an offer in you know late July. Basically the offers are constantly given out as applications come in which of course do, does sort of mean that applying early ends up being a benefit. So keep this in mind if you're thinking about any university in Turkey, um, getting in touch with universities early in the year is obvious, always going to be um, So if you are going to get in touch with Medu after this, generally, you know, it depends on the university, but at Sabancı, we generally take two to three weeks to um, come to return to students with a decision uh, because each application goes through both a faculty evaluation and a scholarship evaluation, after which you receive your offer letter with your scholarship. Every student is evaluated for a scholarship as, you, as, long, as soon as they submit their application, so you do not have to follow a different process. Um, and then, you know, you receive your offer. If you decide to accept the offer and enroll at Sabanju, there's a prepayment that you do to secure your spot. And then, you know, you get on the, on the track to registering in September, which is generally when universities open. 
but as I said, you can always get in touch with either Medu or like you know with us and so on. Um, if you have any questions about this process, of course. Um, especially for us, we have a very sort of welcoming application process generally, uh, very open, so you don't have to really feel, you know, worried about getting in touch with the university about this or that. So you can always, you know, reach out to us, and I'll share my contact information at the end of the presentation, which we're getting to. So before we close, uh, let's talk about the fees and scholarships. So as we are one of the best universities in the entire country, in Turkey, uh, we are also uh, one of the most expensive universities in Turkey, sadly, um, tied with uh, Koç University at the exact same tuition fee at 19,500 USD. We are um, two of the most expensive universities in Turkey. Um, but that is, of course, not to say that, you know, this is the fee that you will be looking to pay. Um, Basically, our scholarship average itself is 35% or so across our, our years, which you know, means that you can basically consider that every student is accepted with a 35% scholarship. You know, in theory, you can sort of consider it that way. But of course, you know, that depends on your academic. But you can see the scholarships that we are, are offer here, like 25%, 50%. Uh, 75 percent and 100 percent scholarships um, there is also an accommodation scholarship that we, that we provide which covers the full cost of dormitory rooms um, for students across the whole four year of their education all of these scholarships are given for the full education time uh, period so they're not yearly or you cannot lose them unless you know you cheat on your exams and take some sort of disciplinary punishment. So they're not given out based on sort of academic requirement. Um, generally, we give out the scholarships based on academic merits during the application, but we do consider every application, every single aspect of the also uh, benefit the scholarship chances of a student even need is considered so if you need to have a certain amount of scholarship to be able to study at the university this will also be a factor that the application committees will keep in mind and we do also provide scholarship increase paths so if you get an offer let's say at the beginning of the year uh, because there were not enough quotas available at that time so you were given an offer of 25 percent but later in the year another spot opened up so now we have 50 percent scholarship availability you can always be reconsidered and get a scholarship scholarship that way too. Um, I am the person who will you know, be the liaison, let's say, for you between the uh, application committees and, and the application yourself. So, you know, you can always get in touch with me or, you know, you can always get in touch with our partners like Medu um, to sort of, you know, ask any questions that you might have, ask for scholarship increases, reevaluations, and so on. If you have any new documents that come out, new exam scores, etc., you can always submit those to us and ask for, you know, to be considered on those uh, levels once again. So as I said, like we have a very sort of relaxed application process, which I generally um, absolutely suggest that you take advantage of. Um, and that's it. So here you can find our contact information you can take like a photo of the screen if you want um that's what i would suggest or just print the screen quickly by clicking print screen and then copy that somewhere um and you can you know follow us on our social media channels which are all quite active um or you can just let, let, let us know let me know uh through email or through you know getting a, just calling us basically if you have any questions and of course medu is here to obviously help you too um, if you ever want to get in touch with us about a question, they'll be more than happy to, you know, assist as well. Um, so that's it from me. Let me stop sharing my screen and let's see if you have any questions. And I'll be happy so to before the them. question, uh, I would like to give a huge thank to you, Mr. John, for the amazing, simple, clear, beneficial, and very professional presentation. Thank Actually, you. I'm always fascinated since I was young with Sabanji and whenever anyone tells, I just mentioned Sabanji, I just say, whoa. So for me, Sabanji in Turkey is like how like Cambridge University in UK. This is for me, like literally um, in Turkey, Sabanji is one of the great universities, as you have mentioned. And I really like that. And especially I was like much more amazed and interested in the accommodation prices because it's very like affordable because when we check like in Turkish universities many of them they have no uh, accommodations inside campuses and if they do have it's really very like expensive prices but when you share the details and the prices it's still very affordable very like 
I really recommend students to stay there and especially the Absolutely. researchers that you have mentioned, like the nanotechnology research and applications. So it made me much more excited uh, to recommend more for uh, graduate students about that. Uh, Thank absolutely. you very much for the information. And also we will wait, like see students if you have any questions here about the university, you can either open your microphone one by one or you can text us in the chat box and we'll be waiting for their questions. Go ahead, students. So far, uh, till the students can make up their questions, I would like to ask you being one of the students in Alwadi, uh, how yeah. many A-levels is required? Hmm. Um, so for A-levels, uh, that's actually a very, very good question. I'll sort of mm -hmm. um, explain that in greater detail for all mm -hmm. students as well. Um, so uh, for us, especially, specifically, mm -hmm. we require two A-levels with minimum C grades mm -hmm. um, to be able to apply. But generally, our scholarship and acceptance rates, uh, you know, we generally accept students mm -hmm. with higher A levels, like at least one A um, is what we generally see mm -hmm. uh, historically, sure. let's say data. Um, mm -hmm. And like most of our applications actually come with like two A's and so on very often. So um, mm -hmm. like that could be something to keep in mind. Of course, you know, as I said, just mm -hmm. to be able to apply, you need to only have two C's. Sure. Um, one thing that is important to keep in mind for all students is that for A level, mm -hmm. um, for GC systems to study in any mm -hmm. Turkish university, uh, you need to have two A levels with minimum D grades. If you do not, um, there's a certificate that you need to get from the Ministry of Education called the equivalency certificate. Mm -hmm. um, if you do not have these grades and you actually like legally cannot study in most Turkish universities. So that is something to keep in mind. And that also mm -hmm. means you have to finish your A levels. So you cannot stop the system Definitely. at the AS level and then try mm -hmm. and study at, uh, at mm -hmm. Turkey. So do keep that in mind. Um, but yeah. For us, it's just two A levels with minimum C. So Subjects to be clear, uh, important. yeah. Thank you very much for your answers. So to be clear, for the students, because we have lots of things like this in uh, Saudi Arabia with international students. So basically, having only AS is not it's not acceptable. They should complete their full A level, like AS exactly. and A two together. They have to finish along with their high school certificate. Because some students basically after grade eleven. They study at home in grade 12 without school, and basically they just give their A-levels. But as far as we know, in Turkey, it's not acceptable. They care more about the high school certificate and then the A-level certificates for that. Yeah, so for the um, for students who like finish the A levels as like sort of private candidates from outside the exactly. school, uh, it is actually possible to study in Turkey. Mm -hmm. It's just the process ends up being a bit more complicated. Like that's the that's the downside. And the equivalency is, thing, yeah. Exactly, exactly. But it is still we doable. do face problems. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, but still, like we have had students like that in last year, mm -hmm. for example. So it's not something that is impossible to do. Mm -hmm. Just a bit more of an annoyance, let's say, for mm -hmm. the student. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, so AS levels are generally in Turkey considered uh, enough for admission. So you can mm -hmm. apply to a lot of universities with AS levels, but Definitely. don't let that confuse you because as I yeah. said, like getting accepted and being able to register are unfortunately two mm -hmm. different things. So uh, for every student, this is like just something mm -hmm. to keep in mind if you're interested in Turkey at all, A levels are mandatory and without them, at least under the current legislation, um, without them, you mm -hmm. just, will not be able to register um so you, you will be taking a risk basically by by mm -hmm. you know coming to turkey so do keep that in mind mm -hmm. we have a question from abdullah abu khair he's saying does sabanji university requires all level and how many subjects are required all level in the sense igcsc Exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. So um, thank you, Abdullah, for the question. Um, so for all levels, we actually generally just consider them for scholarships. Um, as I said, like our ma major admission requirements uh, lie either on AS levels or A-level results. Mm -hmm. So if you have your AS levels, you can just apply with those and we can accept mm -hmm. it with those as well. Um, but all levels, we generally look at more as a form of evaluating the student's academic strength. Um, mm -hmm but not as a mm -hmm. admission criteria. Um, so you cannot get accepted mm -hmm. with only okay. all levels at Sabanjo, sadly. Mm -hmm. So coming back for the AS, as you have mentioned previously, how many AS subjects is required if I want to apply for AS only? 
Yeah, yeah. Actually, for AS, it's the exact same. Like two AS levels with minimum C grades. We oh, keep that cool. the same for A levels and AS levels, uh, because we basically just use the AS levels as a way of evaluating students before they have mm. their A levels, which True. obviously you know come late in the year True. and so on. So just like that, they're basically like a stopgap way of our us like just sort of evaluating them earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the the requirements are the exact same. Sure, we have another question from Jose Imran. He says, so majors requirements are just grade 11 and grade 12 grades, as in Cambridge grades A or B. I would like to tell him, no, grade 10, 11, and 12 for the governmental equivalency things is very required. Exactly. However, for Sabanji University and Turkish University, even with your grade 12 grades and your Cambridge grades, as uh, Mr. John said, like it's like minimum, it can be C, it's acceptable. However, like when you come and finish your registration in the university, you require grade 10, 11, 12, exactly. as well as your Cambridge. Exactly. And if there is anything you would like to correct me about that, so I would give no, you no, everything. No, that, was, that was perfect. No, <laughs> nothing to Thank correct. Thank you. Because <laughs> we do face such things, many things uh, requiring the equivalency and then click with, with the students. Absolutely. So I totally understand. And actually, when I was in Alwadi, we used to have some webinars and many students do used to talk about Lebanon, American invest in Lebanon or in mm -hmm. Egypt, but we never had about Turkey. And I was so fascinated with Turkish universities and Turkey yeah. and I was browsing, but I was lost. You know, I thought it's very hard to get accepted. And mm -hmm. back then I graduated in 2014, which was like mostly in Turkish language. Back then, uh, like many lessons, but now they started opening many English medium. So I wish we had this opportunity back then with Savanji University to Absolutely. make our life really easy. Absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, it's always uh, nice to try and, you know, get in touch with as many students as you can yeah, every exactly. year so that they're aware. But there's always, unfortunately, people that sort of like slip through the cracks and you cannot get True. in touch with them. But yeah, we, I'm very glad that we were able to reach your school, um, you know, Definitely. Uh, this, this day. Yeah, I always recommend them. And is there any questions from the students? If you have questions pop up now, if not, you can contact me or Mr. Chan here and we'll always be there for you and to help you. There's another question again from Abdullah Abul Khair. He's saying, does A-level high grade increase the chance of getting scholarship? Um, yeah, so um, obviously, um, you know, higher grades across the board will always help mm -hmm. you increase your chances of scholarship. Um, but with A levels, there is mm -hmm. another like something to just mention. As mm -hmm. I said, like we uh, we keep our applications open from like January till August, mm -hmm. which means that you know if you are trying to get scholarships with your A levels and they come out, I believe this year they're going to come out on the 18th of August, unless I'm mistaken, or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that means like that's you know quite late into the application period, right? Yeah. So on that front, we do consider predicted A level grades as well. So mm -hmm. um, like when you're applying to the university, let's say you're applying in March or April or something, mm -hmm. if you apply with your AS levels or O levels and your predicted A level grades, we will sort of give you a scholarship on those bases. And then yeah. um, if that offer is not to your liking. Uh, you can then wait for August to receive your final A levels and then ask for a reevaluation mm -hmm. once you have your grades. If they're you know better than you expected mm -hmm. they would be, um, but that is generally like the kind of path that students follow. With A levels, yeah. as I said, coming as late as they do, mm -hmm. um, just just using them for a scholarship application mm -hmm. generally tends to be quite late for a student, and you know that's sure. a very tense thing to wait that long mm -hmm. to learn about the actual result, and you know the university starts in a month and you're still like waiting to figure yeah. out where you're going to go and so on so sure. we generally try and make the decisions a bit early if we can and another question from my side basically i have heard in your presentation you have mentioned ielts so mm -hmm. in sabanji university is ielts acceptable do you accept ielts that's a very good question uh no we don't so uh mm -hmm. in turkey unfortunately um so it actually changes from university to university True. but uh, like Officially, IELTS is unfortunately not supposed to be acceptable mm -hmm. um, based on certain like governmental decisions of a couple of years ago. True. Um, because we have not had the sort of like additional information, we still will not accept the IELTS. Um, mm -hmm. But as I said, in general, English exams are not required. We just suggest mm -hmm. you know, take our own exam instead. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't want to risk taking our exam and failing it, then yeah. you can take the TOEFL instead. Mm -hmm. But that's what we suggest. Because most of the students coming, and I was one of them coming from Saudi Arabia, we usually choose IELTS because it's recognized worldwide and it's 
uh, British, yeah, yeah. Uh, British curriculum, I mean exam, which is easier and the American system is uh, uh, TOEFL. And another question regarding when it comes to TOEFL, as I have seen, you have mentioned that the minimum acceptance is 80. So exactly. for example, for me, I have got 79. Will you accept my 79 or it has to be minimum 80? It has to be minimum 80, unfortunately. That's minimum always a very 80. heartbreaking moment to realize it that a student misses the grade with just like yeah. one point or something. Exactly. But unfortunately, we sort of yeah, we have the minimums mm -hmm. for a reason. Uh, all the minimum acceptance requirements that we have, so like A levels, you know, two Cs mm -hmm. and so on, all of those are set in stone. Basically, they're not things that we um, mm -hmm. do a lot of like sort of you know relaxation mm -hmm. on. Sure. Thank you very much. That's from my side, the questions apart from the students. And if there is any other questions, we are here to take it. I think so far, so good. Yeah, for sure. It's all right. Don't worry. It's always yeah. like um, breaking that barrier of asking questions is always mm -hmm. difficult. So it's not a problem at all. Okay. Uh, well, basically, another question which comes to regulation is in Turkey, because Saudi Arabia now. Uh, the lockdowns and everything is mm. being uh, removed, especially wearing masks when you go outside because 80% of the population have been vaccinated. Exactly. However, those minorities, because in everywhere in the world will find those minorities coming to the universities, if they're not vaccinated, what will be their requirements in Turkey, like in Sabanji? Yeah. Will you accept them to enter or do they need regular PCRs? Yeah. Um, so that's also a good question. So. Um, Obviously, we would prefer, uh, like officially, the university would prefer that all students are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. We have started like sort of fully on campus courses. So sure. um, that is something that we suggest that students mm -hmm. do if they're able to take the vaccination, to, you know, get vaccinated mm -hmm. and come to campus and just study sure. as regular as at any other year. Mm -hmm. um, but if for this or that reason, you're not able to travel, you're not able to get vaccinated or something of that sort, we do also have online education still continuing. So you can mm -hmm. also choose to like continue your education online cool. if you have have a specific you know valid mm -hmm. reason as to why you're not able to mm -hmm. attend on campus um and the same example uh you know mm -hmm. this also applies to like exams and so on so you can take mm -hmm. your exams online too um but yeah like the university's decision for this year has been to just fully mm -hmm. completely move to com like on campus education we provide pcr tests um free of charge on university oh, like handled good. by mm -hmm. the university's own health center mm -hmm. we have like because the dormitories are on campus we have like mm -hmm. quarantine spaces in the dormitories on campus mm -hmm. because the health center is on the university we can do like mm -hmm. free pcr tests and antigen tests and so on ourselves mm -hmm. so we don't have to go outside so, and sure. like we've taken all kinds of precautions you know with regards to masks mm -hmm. and this and that on campus too so like everything is ready for full mm -hmm. campus education so students don't really mm -hmm. have to hesitate i do not think that we'll be going back on that in the coming years mm -hmm. either um but of course like having the vaccination means that you're mm -hmm. able to enjoy Important. the campus as you yeah. would normally so that's what i would generally suggest mm -hmm. so last question definitely from my side so the education now system is it fully uh face to face because many students from our company they are asking us like I want uh, an education online or does Sabanji or other universities provide online education? So basically yeah, yeah. we go back to the universe and we contact them regarding this. Yeah, yeah. so um, so education is, as I said, in, like intended to be fully online. If there is a very yeah. specific reason as to why a student mm -hmm. is not able to attend the university, mm -hmm. then they can take online courses. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean... I understand that, you know, it sort of feels more comfortable sometimes for students mm -hmm. to think about it. Like, it will maybe be better to take the courses from home and so on. But, like, sure. studying at a university campus, especially in, like, sort of vibrant mm -hmm. campuses that, you know, some mm -hmm. Turkish universities like Sabanji and others mm -hmm. uh, provide, that's such a, like, sort of major aspect of university education. Mm -hmm. Like, university is not actually only for the program that you study and so on True. it's also this kind of like social environment that lets you grow as a person like teaches you things like you know time management or just social skills mm. and so on so like following all of that online personally i mm. think is actually quite detrimental mm -hmm. um i would absolutely suggest that students you know like as I talked yeah. about in the presentation too, right? Like we have this exchange program yeah. where we allow you to, sure. like, you know, we cover your costs to go and study in the Netherlands. Like when you can do that, 
to just experience a different country for a year and you know exactly. all the personal growth opportunities that that, that provides why would you yeah. choose to like you know stay in home in your pajamas and take calculus <laughs> courses and so on right so like that's what i would suggest to you know just yeah. Fully yeah. go back to you know face to face courses and live your life like you're supposed mm -hmm. to and so on and so sure. forth. Thank you very much, and we'll take the last two questions and we'll be done for today. So mm -hmm. Abdullah Bukhari asks, what subjects are required in A level to register for mechatronics? Um, yeah, so for um, the, universities, uh, the university's education model that I talked about, like this, you know, freedom of choice thing between mm -hmm. every program, that actually mm -hmm. means that we do not have specific program related requirements. Since we accept students to the university and every program at the same mm -hmm. time in general, we basically accept students without any kind of subject requirement in any system. So mm -hmm. you can basically take any A-level, Abdullah, mm -hmm. um, and as long as your grades match our minimum requirements, you'll be able to apply. Mm -hmm. um, if you are going to apply to mechatronics and you absolutely want to study mechatronics and you only choose mechatronics during the application, I would suggest at the very least having a physics grade, um, mm -hmm. perhaps a mathematics grade, um, because those applications do still go to faculties and they do keep that sure. in mind. But um, even if you apply with like psychology and sociology, no one will mm -hmm. look at the application and say like you're uneligible to apply. Like that, that's, that, that just isn't what mm -hmm. we do. And the last question here from Huzaifa Imran, what A-level subjects are required for MBBS? MBBS stands for Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelors of Surgery. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, we do not have a medical program. Um, so mm. uh, no A-levels are required for <laughs> our MBBS <laughs> program because we do not have it. Um, but I mean, I'm yeah. sure, you know, Mediterranean can help you uh, with, you know, finding universities that have medical programs. Um, sure. There's a lot of them in Turkey, a lot of good, you know, mm. good programs and so on. So I'm sure you'll find somewhere that, you know, fits your expectations. I was one of the students when I was young, I wanted to study medicine, but uh, mm. Destiny didn't allow me so I entered into a medical field, which is pharmacy. And I yeah. continued in the medical biotechnology. So if there are other students who would like to study in the medical field because it's Absolutely. very broad, I would definitely also recommend them for molecular biology and genetics and engineering. So it's Absolutely. I mean, if you're interested in like the more research aspects of it and not yeah. sort of practice, because practicing medicine mm. is a very different thing that, you know, okay. not every human being, I think, is able to do um, mm -hmm. simply with regards to like, you know, how you can take, to seeing blood and so on and so forth, mm. that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in the research aspect, I would absolutely suggest mm. that too. But yeah, as I said, in Turkey, there's a lot of options of True. pharmacy, you know, awesome universities, pharmaceutical programs, you know, medical programs and so on. So I'm sure that you'll know, you can find True. whatever you're looking yeah. for. Definitely. So you're welcome, Abdullah. So I think it's up, we are done for today. And a huge thanks to you, Mr. Chan and uh, to Ms. Salma as well to help us for arranging this uh, great webinar with our students over here. And I would like to also thank Sel and I for working hard also and explaining about Medu and uh, having in contact and joining us all together here. A huge thank to everyone for this great webinar. Yeah, um, thank you very much from my side as well for um, you know welcoming me uh, for setting this up, uh, Mohammed and I. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody who attended uh, for taking the time. As I mentioned earlier, too, if you have any questions, you can always get in touch with Medu or get in touch with me, and I'll be happy to help out. And uh, have a nice weekend, I suppose. Thank you. Same to you and our dear students. And I would like to say welcome to Ms. Selma and Bujain. And our contacts is in the chat box. And even Mr. Chan, he showed his contact information. I hope you took a screenshot or pictures out of that. And we're waiting for your communicating with us. Thank you very much. And I wish you a great weekend for all of us. Thank you, everyone. See you. Bye. See you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.